Welcome everybody to another one hour rebellion. We have a treat for you today. Uh, playing my old friend Grant, but as you may have already noticed, I have been tricked into representing the bad guys, so I will be playing the rebels today. Um, <laughs> so we'll see how this goes. Working on setup right now. Um, you know, Grant and I have pretty similar deployment strategies, I think, for the most part. Looks like he's leaning towards a single ATST Death Star, but in Celeste and then Star Destroyer in Coruscant. Uh, full fleet in Rodeo, full fleet in Mandalore. I think both of those make sense. You'll notice we're doing base unit setups with a loyal Mon Cal, even though we have a neutral Seleucami. I think basically Grant is being nice to me here. Normally we would do rote deployment and put the Death Star under construction in Dagobah so you can subjugate Utapau right away. Um, but I think because I don't play Rebels very often, uh, he's given me a chance to get uh, three Mon Cals here, so that's pretty cool. In this sort of deployment, it's, um, you know, it's, a, it's really important to try to think about how you're going to get Utapau here. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if I just stick three troops in Utapau. Um, the reason sometimes you want to deploy troops in Utapau, obviously, is because when you attempt to build alliance there, you get two extra dice. Makes blocking uh, with the Emperor a less attractive thing to do. Um, you know, maybe another thing to do... Well, so let's talk about the base. Okay, I don't play Rebels very often. So... When you're deploying, you want to think about where are the opportunistic places that you can blockade. You want to think about where you might sabotage, and you want to think how you're going to get alliance in Utapau. So here, I think I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the map, and I'm seeing that there's an opportunity to block an assault carrier by attacking where the Death Star is, right? Maybe I bring an X-Wing, blow a couple of TIE Fighters up. Maybe I don't bring the X-Wings and just threaten the Death Star later. I don't know, but I do like the idea of preventing an assault carrier from being built. Then maybe I sabotage um, Corellia, you know, depending on whether or not he plays R&D. Um, and then where do I want to go for a base? Well, I usually, by default, don't like to be near the Death Star. So that takes Endor and Hoth and Dagobah off the map. Dantooine, Ilum, maybe Kessel, Yavin, all those are possibilities. I end up going with Dantooine here. And my starting objective is a regional support, regional aid. So I got to get loyalty in all one system. Um, and you'll see here, I drew temporary alliance. So we're going to get a lot of Mon Cal's on the queue here. So one from Temporary Alliance, one from Build Alliance and Utapau, because I already have Mothma there, and then one from Mon Cal, unless Grant has Display of Power. So with Mothma being occupied, what do we do with the remaining units? Okay, I do want to keep Leia back because I might want to block diplomacy missions, I then obviously need to run Build Alliance, and we'll run that with Dodonna. And then the next question is, do I want to sabotage or do I want to infiltrate? Okay, infiltrate lets me get through level one objectives. Sabotage potentially lets me um, block a Star Destroyer production. However, what I didn't consider very well, and this is kind of a timing thing, because Mothma is on an action already, I will have to sabotage. Imperials will definitely get last action here. So you'll notice Tag was on a mission. That's almost definitely R&D. You know, I guess he could be just threatening R&D, um, but we'll see. So the other thing I do here is I attack, um, I attack Mustafar with the idea of with only a single AT-AT there, I feel pretty confident I can win with four troopers. 
Um, I did bring an X-Wing. I, you know, I, I have two X-Wings in Hoth. I brought one to see if maybe he would let the transport survive. He didn't, you know, in thinking maybe he uh, plays a different combat card or whatever. Anyway, all right. Um, so he's got one Stormtrooper in, in, Mal in Mustafar. If he has an ATST here, I don't actually think I make this attack here. But because it was one Stormtrooper, I think it made sense. Basically, I'm using Leia to block a uh, transport from being produced, an air, uh, assault carrier. And I can afford to do that because I'm not going to stay back and try to block Tag's mission because it's most likely R&D. So now I'm sort of regretting not running Infiltrate instead of uh, Sabotage, but we'll see. All right, so Build Alliance in Utapau, that's not going to get blocked because it would be 4v3. Emperor is going to go to Naboo. That makes sense. And then now I have a decision on where to sabotage. Do I go for Corellia and maybe tag is on, you know, a different logistics mission, maybe? Or do I go to block Bothui and prevent an AC from be or uh, a um, ATST from being built? I decide to actually go for Celust because I want to try to bluff maybe a little bit that the base might kind of be in that area um, and I'm also considering prepping a little bit for regional uh, support because you know I don't want a ton of things moving to Celeste I want to get an easy um, easy loyalty there next turn so we'll see tag does an R&D gets to choose between two things um, so it's a good thing I did not sabotage Corellia and then Vader goes to Ord to get an aircraft, uh, an assault carrier build. So uh, Imperials will be building one Star Destroyer, one assault carrier. That's good for them. I blocked one assault carrier. I am gaining a ton of air power. Um, I'll have all three Mon Cal's on the queue. I'll have two Nebulons on the queue. And I draw Admiral Akbar here, which is a great leader if you're anticipating major space battles. So, so far things really go in my way. Um, Krennic's Finest pops up on the Imperial side, which means I have to be mindful of captures. And now for placing units, or for, for skip, skipped unit placement, um, nothing too major that was important on here. You'll notice I did grab an Incite Rebellion, which is nice. Um, that could help me score Crippling Blow, which was my objective I picked, even though I didn't infiltrate, so that feels okay. Um, and then I'm just running the basic missions here. Keeping one back. And see what the Emperor, Empire is doing here. Okay, so we've got Emperor on a mission. That's likely a loyalty mission. And we have Tarkin on a mission, which could be a loyalty mission. Could be a gather intel mission or could be R&D. Because I have Leia back, I don't think think it would be an intel mission so most likely loyalty or two loyalty missions anytime the emperor's on a mission you need to be thinking about okay maybe display a power or um, trade relations things like that so we're going to open with an infiltrate that seems fine defensive positions and support of the huts I don't really like either of those, especially because I have regional support. I do have one loyalty on Bothwe already, but defensive positions is just so hard to score that I'll just pass on that. Okay, Teg goes up to Seleucami because he's getting in position to take out Moncal. Uh, for those of you wondering why he wouldn't just bring the assault carrier, it's because the assault carrier could be hit and ran next turn. Um, and then why not bring just the Star Destroyer? Well, he also needs some presence up in the Nalhutta region. So right now I feel pretty good because he's leaving the Rebel Base spot, which, you know, the region where the Rebel Base is in Dantooine fairly open. He does have an Assault Carrier down there and a Star Destroyer in Corellia, so we'll have to keep an eye and see where he goes on that. Okay, I'm going to drop a Sabotage down in Ord. That is nice because it's near the base. But it's also not super obvious because it's an assault carrier build location there. So I feel like that's pretty good in general. Um, I don't think that gives away too much. Vader heading to Utapau. Okay, Vader heading to Utapau is interesting. Why not use Krennic's Finest? Well, that's 
It could be because the emperor is on display of power or, um, you know, maybe Tarkin's on rule by fear. So it just sort of furthers my idea that there's a diplomacy mission down there. Okay, um, so Krennic's Finest moves all the troops out of Ord, which is preventing a point towards um, towards cut supply lines, which I could have cut supply lines because I chose to sabotage a um, Celeste last round, so I think that makes sense to move everything out of there. It's nice, I like having... You know, I like having sabotaged vacant areas. I mean, there is a TIE fighter there, so I can't wrap it there later, but I think that makes sense. And then here's a big piece. Mothma builds alliance down in Celeste, and then the Emperor comes back right away with um, Imperial propaganda. So I went for the objective score, but Vader being where the Emperor is now, that's five dice against two for propaganda, and that removes three loyalty, which is just absolutely crippling. Um, and then Tarkin with a rule by fear. So rule by fear up in Utapau as well. That is a, um, that's a nasty combo. So cleared out three of my loyalty and gained Star Destroyer and Assault Carrier production in Utapau. What a nightmare. Um, could I have hedged against that? I probably could have put Leia in Utapau instead of taking loyalty with Mothma there, um, forced him to use Tarkin first, and then maybe that would have tipped me off and maybe I do a build alliance in Nalhada or somewhere instead and at least don't lose three loyalty, but that's really bad. So it's going to make it hard for me to score regional aid, and on top of that, I have support of the Huts coming up next. Now let's rewind real quick back to turn one when I chose a sabotage instead of an infiltrate. Had I chosen an infiltrate, I could have potentially kept crippling blow, gotten rid of support of the huts, and then my next two missions could have been, um, you know, whatever is under um, defensive positions and defensive positions. So, you know, I think I think the turn one sabotage was being greedy for sure. Anyway is what it is. So I'm producing one X-Wing here. I think I stick that in the base probably. Or maybe in Moncal. Moncal doesn't make a whole lot of sense. We'll stick that on the base. And then I've got Jin. Why take Jin? Well, because I drew Covert Operations and I really like Covert Operations. Covert Operations is an infiltrate that gets you a mission in your hand. Um, and this is a good talking point for the combination of covert operations and infiltrate. So otherwise I'm just running a sabotage and a loyalty mission. Nothing real great here. I'm not ready to use Incite Rebellion yet to try to get Crippling Blow scored. I feel like there's other opportunities to score Crippling Blow and there's lots of different uses for Incite Rebellion. So just a quick note on that, don't spend your missions just for the sake of spending your missions. Um, make sure your good missions are scoring the objectives. All right, let's talk about covert operations while the Imperials assign here. So the, the, the deciding factor for me on whether or not to use covert operations and then infiltrate or infiltrate and then covert operations has to do with where your objective deck is currently. Okay, I still have one level one mission to go and two level twos. Level twos are generally pretty great, you know, including the ability to draw something like raid outposts or something like, um, you know, uh, rebel cell. However, drawing those off covert operations does not always feel like it works out right. You know, for example, if you draw, if you know Rebel Cell's coming up with an infiltrate, you can do your build alliance in a way which gives you a spot to drop your Rebel Cell in a nice spot. If I were to draw Rebel Cell now with covert operations, it would just have to go to Mon Cal and then immediately be lost. So, you know, so what to do? So I like to covert operations when there's, if there's a level one on the top of the deck still. So here I have seize control and threaten the core. So I'm not close to scoring threaten the core. I don't have a hidden fleet queued up. So I will take seize control 
and then I'll be infiltrating my next two level two missions, right? Let's say I did it backwards in this instance. I would be putting either seize control or threaten the core on the bottom, and then I'd be infiltrating the one I didn't put on the bottom plus one extra. So I would only see three objectives instead of four. By covert first, I'm looking at two, putting one on the bottom and taking one, and then infiltrating, looking at the next two. So here my infiltrate is Death Star plans, which I don't have planned the assault for, or Liberation, which is generally pretty easy to score. So now I know I'll be drawing Liberation, I have Seize Control, and I have um, Crippling Blow. So I have a lot of combat objectives, which all the more reason not to waste your Insight Rebellions, because that will defi almost definitely score one of those. Okay, let's talk about this sabotage in in um, Mandalore. I feel like I'm sort of starting to give some things away now. Maybe I would give away more if I sabotaged my Guido. Um, I don't know. I think it's okay because I'm stacking leaders up in, a, in one spot. So I did Jin first. She has a small fist icon. Then I Dodonaed on top of Jin. Then I sabotaged on top of both of them. So I have one and a one in a small fist right now in case Boba's on a capture. So I think that's probably okay. I have Leia back to add another fist in case Boba's on a capture. So I have to kind of just do some pacing here. I'll put um, Akbar in the base because I don't want to be collected bounty and I don't need to put him out to be captured where Regan is. Um, obviously it would have been better if he was on rapid mode, but, and then here's Vader with the capture. So now I have Riken, Jin, so that's two and a little fist, plus Leia, that's three, three and a, uh, three and a green, I think, is what I'm rolling against Boba Fett here. So by stacking your leaders, you can kind of hedge, or maybe two and a green? No, three and a green, Jin's got a large fist icon too. Okay, so by stacking your leaders like that, you also hedge against captures, um, Boba attempted and missed here, and that feels nice because that's just a wasted pacing move by the, or a wasted capture attempt, wasted leader by the Emperor. I still did everything I wanted to do. Um, yeah. Now he did clear off. Um, so, so this is, okay, let's talk about this real quick. So this build alliance is all over the place here. I, I end up building alliance in Kashyyyk. I mean, obviously I would have been better off building an alliance somewhere in the Nalhutta region if I'm trying to score that. I'm thinking to myself, maybe I might get regional aid scored in that central, you know, Mandalore, Kashyyyk, Malastare area. But even if I'm trying to do that, I should be grabbing Malastare because support of the, or Wookiee Uprising can get me a loyalty in Kashyyyk. So I don't, I don't know what that move was. That wasn't a, a very good idea. Okay, now I'm sitting on three combat objectives and two loyalty objectives. That feels okay. Um, I haven't played a lot of missions, so I actually have to discard a couple here. Um, I'll discard Misdirection. I did draw a Hidden Fleet. That's kind of nice. And here I think I make another mistake. So I have the option for Cassian and K2SO, and I have the option for Chewie with the Falcon or Han with the Falcon. Now I know he's got Boba Fett and tried to capture, which means he's probably going to try to do it again. Um, Grant's playing the Rote Imperial deck, so there's more useful capture cards in there. And I end up taking Cassian because I have Cassian's mission. However, um, I also have too many cards in my hand currently. And my thought was K2SO can give Jin a third fist icon, so I can run things like Demolition. But I could have just taken Chewbacca and had a third um, a third fist icon, or three real uh, fist icons instead of one and two small uh, green ones. Anyway, um, I think that was a major oversight. I also then could have had the Falcon, uh, would have been better off blocking Boba Fett's missions, and could have discarded um, my rescue card if I needed to, and still used Cassian's card to get one. All right, putting a couple things in the base. Um, Jin is now four intel and three fist and one diplomacy so she's my superhero at the moment then i need to start playing some missions here too so um, we're getting all the basics out 
Uh, Leia is going to try to incite rebellion here, so we'll try to cycle through a couple of a uh, couple of cards here. Also, with Jin and all the combat objectives I have, I pulled something to fight for for hers. Now that's a kind of a case by case action card. Um, what it is is if you win a ground if you win a combat where Jin is. You can then take an objective card that you've already played, including one that you've just won. So if you scored Major Victory or Liberation or whatever where Jin is, you can then put that objective card back on the top of your deck, which pretty much guarantees you draw it at the end of the round. So seems like some good combinations on there. All right, I got Tag and Veers on a mission. Don't love that, but honestly, that's probably just Interdictor. Um... You know, the fact that he drew Veers in general means he's probably sitting on Planetary Assault, so I'll have to keep that in mind, maybe. And again, that would have been nice to have Chewbacca behind. All right, Leia with Insight Rebellion, and I'm going to go ahead and do that in Mandalore. That will not let me score Crippling Blow, but it will let me score Seize Control or Liberation. You know, should I have infiltrated with Jin there first? I think I probably should have. That's probably what I should have done that turn. But instead, um, you know, instead we'll just go in, kill the tank, and then it's three on one. He doesn't have a leader there, obviously. So I think the one to score there is seize control. Seize control. So seize control, you can win a ground or a space combat. Liberation has to be a ground combat. But liberation also doesn't have to be in a sabotaged area. So I think here I score seize control. I'm not sure if that's right. Let me know what you would have done there in the comments if you like. Um, yeah, I feel like that might have been able to have been done better had I had I infiltrated with Jim there first. I guess that could have led to a capture, but I don't know. I feel like that's sort of unlikely. All right, now we just have pacing stuff to do next. So I have Dodonna on Infiltrate, and I cannot infiltrate where Leia is anymore. So I'll infiltrate over Seleucami with the idea of if I do get captured, I might be able to liberate that spot next. Okay, Rebel Cell, Heart of the Empire. So the heart is open right now. There's just a single Stormtrooper there, but there is a Star Destroyer next door. So I'll go ahead and take Rebel Cell and now, when you know you're going to draw Rebel Cell, you need to be very thoughtful about where you build your alliance so that you can get your Rebel Cell out in a good place and defend it for at least a turn. Because if you take Rebel Cell and then don't score with it, you have drawn an objective and completely wasted it. If you score one with Rebel Cell, you've kind of broken even, and if you've scored two, you've come out ahead. So Rebel Cell can be a super powerful card, especially when you're holding on to things that you're having trouble scoring, like my um, like my loyalty objectives right now. Yeah, we'll see. All right, Interdictor's coming up. Interdictor's probably necessary since I'm sitting on one Mon Cal in the base and two in the next area. So I'm thinking about Rebel Cell here. If I put it in Kessel, he doesn't have a great option outside of moving the Kashyyyk Star Destroyer to Toydaria. But if he does move the Kashyyyk Star Destroyer to Toydaria, then I have a little bit of a mess on my hands. Now, what I like about this is that the Kashyyyk Star Destroyer is now further away from Dantooine. So, you know, maybe that's okay. Maybe I draw a plan the Assault, or I could be a little cheeky and play Hidden Fleet there at the start of next turn and defend my, my base pretty well. I don't know. Uh, this time Akbar's going in the base with a um, Rapid Mobe. And then... Oh, yep, yeah, Boba's on. Boba is on bounty. So I'll try to block this with Jin, but I don't I don't see how this is a smart block here. I have one and two greens, but Boba's at plus two, so he's almost guaranteed gonna get that. I think I didn't like that Vader was on a mission too, and that it's gonna get pulled back into Krennic's finest area. So I think my analysis was I'm more likely to block a 
uh, collect bounty than I am something else. All right, I'm going to sabotage Seleucami. That's the next closest spot to the rebel base, which seems kind of crazy, but also might help protect rebel cell. Um, invader with an exploit weakness. Okay, exploit weakness is really good. It um, takes a random card out of the hand. So the way we do random is we group it up and we shuffle it four times and whatever cards on the top comes up. And that puts that, um, that mission on the top of the deck. So that means I'm no longer able to put Rebel Cell in Kessel when I open up. Honestly, that might be okay. I'm not entirely sure how I was going to defend that. Um, it puts Liberation on the top of the deck, which does a few things. Now he knows I have Liberation, because I'm going to draw that next. And it also lets him know, well, he already knows I have um, Regional Support, too. So now he knows two of the four objectives in my hand, and he also knows I don't have Death Star plans. Well, not yet. Um, it'll take me at least another round because I'll be redrawing Liberation here. So he also knows the Death Star is safe. Okay, looked at some probes, a couple of okay ones in there that maybe I can save. There's Yavin. Um, I'll probably stick that in my brain in case I needed to do... Uh, you know, a late game rapid, but yep. All right. Feels more and more like the Empire is starting to close in on here. I'm going to redraw Liberation. I'm going to draw Established Trade Relations. That's not super useful right now, but might be good for scoring Support of the Huts, maybe. Um, he's already played Propaganda, and I do need to start scoring some missions here. Uh, I also need to discard. Uh, this discard would be a lot easier if I could just discard the rescue and keep the falcon, but instead I'll discard Yoda and hope I don't draw Luke. And I draw Luke. Um, <laughs> so I think I'll take Medin here. Uh, Medin's nice. So in theory, let's say I had had Rebel Cell here. I could have used Medin to take out the walker if he didn't deploy extra stuff in Toydaria and then, you know, maybe defend the ground spot in Kessel a little bit better. Um, he's got Ozzel, so that's not, that's not great. Ozzel has probably the most powerful Imperial card for action cards, catch them by surprise, which lets them do a attack before the first rebel action with Admiral Ozzel. So that's a, that's often a game winning card there. If you can pin the rebel base in a certain way. Um, and then I have to deploy. So... I know Rebel Cell's coming up, but, you know, the question is, what do I do? Since, it, you know, if the Rebel Cell was in Kessel, maybe i put these Mon Cal's in Kessel and try to take out that Star Destroyer. I don't know. I'll just stick them in the base. I don't really know what to do here. I'll put a guy in Kessel, I think, because why not? Um, and then I'll leave the X-Wing and Nebulon on the queue for next round. Just keep stuff in the base right now. Um, the nice thing is, is because his fleet in, in Mygito is not super strong, if he stumbles into the base, I can wipe whatever he brings into the base and then counterattack in Mygito, and then he has nothing near the base at all. And I'm going to go ahead and Desperate Hour here. Honestly, I'm not really sure what I'm looking for. I'm debating over taking Public Uprising. But the problem with Public Uprising is I then need to put another person on it. But I could put Jin on there, score one of my combat objectives, and then take it back um, right away if I wanted to do that. The problem with that is I'm starting to run out of attack activations if I take Public Uprising. So maybe I'll just take an Incite Rebellion, I guess? Um, I don't know about that decision either, but... I, I mean, I, I definitely I definitely saw the logic when I was doing it, and I, I think it makes some sense, but also might make sense just to put her on a mission that, I mean, we have to get missions out of our hands, and there's lots of playable missions in our hand right now. I mean, I could even put her on stolen plans and then stick Rebel Cell where I wanted it to go instead of, I don't know. Again, if you want to let me know in the comments what you would have done there, that would have been great too. Um, because <laughs> now if I don't play missions, I have to discard missions, and Cassian's missions is worth very little because, yeah, anyway. 
Um, another thing to think about with um, Leia's mission is we still have level two objectives coming out, which could be, you know, raid outposts where you're putting target markers on the ground and then heist can pick up target markers. And I don't, haven't played heist yet, don't have it. So if I were to say infiltrate rebel cell and pull raid outposts, it would be nice to be able to put Leia on a heist to grab one of those next turn if they stuck it, you know, on top of a remote where they already had units at, like Tatooine, for example. Okay, anyway, that's what I got. I am not playing Trade Relations because Mothma is captured. And, uh... Yep, we will see. All right, three Imperial missions, Emperor, Boba Fett, Tag... We're on a build round, so Tag's probably on R&D. Emperor's probably on a loyalty mission. Maybe you just rule by fear, because Grant's got to start watching my loyalty. Um, I will rescue Mothma. That seems fair. No more torture cards lined up. And even if, you know, that might not have been the right spot to do a torture anyway, just because he's got to cover Kessel. You'll notice he deployed the interdictor up in Toydaria rather than Megiddo. It's a pretty big decision because that means he's, you know, he's expecting a fleet battle up there. Interdictor's got a super powerful combat effect card. So, you know, I definitely see the logic there. If I'm hiding on Kessel, which if you remember when I was picking my base, I was leaning towards doing you know, then if I attack out of the base, he's the defender, so he'll be canceling my combat card, and then we're kind of on even grounds fighting. So, okay. Here I do secret mission. This seems suspect as well. So I've done, so now with secret mission for two, and Leia's card for one, I've now pulled three cards out of the deck. I wasn't even sure what to take with Leia's card, so I'm not actually sure what what, what I'm hoping for here. I guess more combat effect triggers. You know, there's Wookiee Uprising, and at that point in the game, I realize the mistake of building an alliance in Kashik instead of Malastare, because then maybe I could use Jin for Wookiees and, you know, Mothma for Alliance and Mandalore and then score regional aid that way. But instead, I just take Hit and Run, which is pretty much always good, and Heist, which oftentimes is good as well. Um, yeah, again, man, Rebels is tough. Like, there's a lot to think about for what you want to do. But you always want to be focusing on these objectives. You don't want to focus on how am I going to, you know, crush the Empire. I mean, you can defeat the Empire handedly, as you guys have seen in multiple of my losses on this channel. Like, three Moncals is a tough nut to crack. Um, yeah. Anyway, so I pulled two pretty good missions out of the deck. Um, Tarkin just checked Ilum, which means he's got a solo Star Destroyer on, on Maegito. I think if I had Rebel Assault, I'd probably attack now. Um, we'll see. I'm going to gain loyalty in Nalhada with Riken. So that puts me at three loyalty, so maybe I'll sneak away with support of the Huts here. I doubt it, because the Emperor's probably on Rule by Fear. Um, but we'll see. Okay, Ozl go into Nalhutta with just the inner, no, with, with, with both the Interdictor and the Star Destroyer. Okay, what that tells me is he might have drawn Kessel with the last round of probe cards that he did the Gather Intel with. And maybe he thought, well, hey, if you're not, maybe he drew Kessel and was like, well, if you're not in Kessel, hopefully you're in Nalhutta because I have this big fleet here. I'm feeling pretty happy because that fleet just walked away from Dantooine, and now he's even further away from the base that has three Mon Cal's stuffed in the middle of it. You know, would I have led with just an assault carrier into Nalhutta? I don't know. If you do that, reveal the fleet, you know, the fleet at least is stuck there because I have leaders in the base. Um, maybe. Maybe you do that. Not sure. All right, we're going to incite rebellion on top of a sabotaged, um, sabotaged uh, Seleucami. 
and we're just playing the no heal card, trying to roll a hit on three dice plus a re-roll here. Yep, got it. I'm gonna score liberation. Okay, so Leia's card pulled an insight rebellion out, which scored a objective. I think that's worth it. I mean, basically, you want to score an objective with Leia's Desperate Hour card. If you're not, if you're not either saving the game or scoring an objective, I think that's a waste. Oh, that's right. I did that in Mon Cal, not Salukamai, and that's because I know I have Rebel Cell coming up here. So with Rebel Cell in Mon Cal, where there are troops, knowing that Vader has already played Hunt Them Down, that means he can't display a power. The Star Destroyer has already moved over to Nal Hutta, and I have a hit and run queued up for that last assault carrier if he wants to move that over to Salukamai. All right, and uh, Krennic's Finest just stumbled into the base on Dantooine. He, after drawing all those probes, and checking the other remotes, he had to have known it was there, I would assume. The Death Star hasn't moved off of Mustafar. He's probably got Hoth and Endor probes already. I don't know. All right, here's Krennic's Finest. Uh, Akbar is in the base with Mothma already, thanks to the rescue, but no need to play the um, It's a Trap card. Um, also don't wanna use my Fleet Logistics card and most likely, if I'm Krennic's Finest, I'm probably playing Imposing Presence to block two hits. So the correct card here, I think, is to play the Corvette card to cancel. But I get a little bit thrown off because he doesn't play that card, and I forget I'm defending because I'm so used to attacking in this scenario that I don't cancel the card, and I say no card next turn. So literally a mistake. He rolls two hits. It kills my um, it kills my Corvette. So what a nightmare that was. Um, I also over edited there. Um, I rolled heal, so I could have healed my Corvette, but I I didn't want to ask for a take back there because that's just I mean I need to learn from that. That's a that's a doozy. Okay, so now I've got a sabotage queued up, and I can either sabotage in Toydaria to try to protect. Um, the Rebel Cell, or I can sabotage in my Guido and hope that he is not on R&D. Um, I choose to protect... Oh, interesting. Okay, I choose to protect Rebel Cell, and um, Veers comes into Kessel, which means maybe he didn't have Kessel, I guess, or maybe he's just trying to cover it now um, to kill my one unit in there. Um, so... I will uh, defend it with Cassian, who's there. I also managed to kill Krennic's Finest with Confrontation on the base, so I can't kill Veers here, which is fine. I mean, again, he picked Veers, which means he's probably got Planetary Assault. Um, and I, I somehow managed to kill the ATST here with one Rebel Trooper, which feels bad for Grant, I'm sure. Um, especially because now it's going to be even harder to get to uh, Mon Cal. So, okay, so Grant's probably in panic mode right now. I've got a very stacked Rebel base, all my Mon Cal's in there, um, and I can just sort of pick off his pieces one by one. Now, on the plus side, he has built a lot of Star Destroyers in there on the queue. Um, I did not take Demolition with Leia's card or Cassian's card, so I don't have a way to get them off the queue. But three Mon Cal's is a lot, of, a lot of beef, especially when the Interdictor is all the way up north. Okay, I did score Support of the Huts. Um, that was nice. The Emperor ruled by fear in Magito, I believe, to try to prevent a sabotage from Fulton there. So I did get uh, Magito. Rebel Cell does come up finally. And, you know, I feel better about putting it in Mon Cal than I would have in, um, in Kessel. So maybe this ended up working out for the best. Getting that Rebel Cell out is probably going to pull his... Um, it's probably going to pull his uh, Veer's Planetary Assault card out because he cannot let that sit there. And maybe that's why he moved to Kessel, too. I'm not sure. Um... And check at, check at Grant's deployment here. So he's got two Star Destroyers that he's putting in Megiddo. 
and then he's got more Star Destroyers that he's putting in Coruscant. So my thought here is he might be ozzling to pull all his Star Destroyers onto Ord, perhaps, and queue up for a fight. You know, if he doesn't ozzle, I'll almost guaranteed attack out of the base and try to wipe those Star Destroyers. That's too juicy of a target to not. Um, even without my Corvette, three Moncals with fleet logistics and everything, and I'm holding on to um, Prepare for Battle, which lets me take all my cards back. So basically I'll get to use the Moncal Nebulon card twice. I mean, I have to attack if he does not use Ozzel here. Uh, if he Ozzels and goes to Ord, then he might be able to redeploy onto Ilum next turn and then consolidate everything from Ilum and Ord into my Guido. You know, maybe playing an Interdictor here to try to get that on the on the my Guido shield bunker and then making sure I don't get a free sabotage off on the shield bunker. Um, you know, Veers is on a mission. That's probably Planetary Assault. Um, again, if I had Chewbacca here, I might be able to block that. Um, but boy, he's running a lot of missions here. And with no Ozzel, maybe, I don't know, maybe he's trying to bait me into attacking and then play the Emperor's card. That'd be risky, because, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm not sitting on Return of the Jedi. Anyway, we assign, he does not Ozzel. Um, I attack out of the base with Akbar. I do not play my card, because he does not send a leader meaning these Star Destroyers are basically sitting ducks. He's going to roll four red, two re-roll. I flip the combat. He, he anticipated I flipped the combat. He rolled. Um, I blocked two red hits. Yep, there we go. Okay, so he does one damage. I block one red hit. He rolls no additional hits. That feels pretty bad. Um, one, two, three, four. I got one hit. I have three re-rolls. Um, and he cannot retreat here either, which, which is tough. If he had an extra leader here, he could at least retreat with the one Star Destroyer. And then I have played my, my best two cards here. Three, really, if, you, if I had the Corvette alive still too. So you'll notice I did not bring any Starfighters with me. I just left the Starfighters in the base. I didn't want those guys getting picked off. Okay, I also bring a couple of ground units here. I'm not sure if ground units was the best decision or not. If I had left the ground units, I might have been able to retreat if I wanted to do that, but I'm just, I just went for it. Um, and because the Star Destroyer cannot retreat, I, um, I stay. I mean, I want to, I want to kill Imperial stuff. Um, as the Empire, you never want to expect to win the first battle you fight. But you do need to whittle rebel forces down, right? So he's going to try to kill my Nebulon here. I don't have a lot to save it. I just need to make sure I, I kill this thing. So I'll add another damage. He'll waste a card, which is fine. Um, he's rolling first. Or no. Okay. Not sure what happened there. Might have rolled out of order. Maybe he flipped the combat back. I can't imagine he used that card to flip the combat back. All right, Star Destroyer's dead. Big Rebel Fleet in my Guido. A couple of Star Destroyers uh, near a sabotaged Ord. Tarkin is going to... Oh, there we go. Okay, so Tarkin is going to um, Imperial Might in Ilum and get some units down there. Okay, that's nice. He's got two Assault Carriers there now. Um, okay, I see that. Um, Jin is going to heist. I'm going to draw level two object, or my first level three. And I feel okay about using heist now because I know raid outposts is not in the deck. And even if I draw a bad level three objective, I need things to discard into rebel cell. And then Vader uh, does retrieve the plans, which, I mean... Retrieve the plans is fine here. He knows I'm on regional support. Now he sees I have Crippling Blow and also Uprising, so he can play against those. He takes regional support and puts it at the bottom of the deck because I'm only one away with um, 
with uh, Alliance and Toydaria. So I think that's the right move, but I could also just discard that into um, into Rebel Cell, so maybe I would have taken Crippling Blow. Eh, I don't know. We'll see. All right, Medine is adding, adding uh, Hit and Run, and I'm going to take out an Assault Carrier. I debate on doing it over Ilum, but I just take the freebie because I, I just don't want to roll badly and waste the mission. And then we are gathering intel. I have Cassian back, but you know, is it worth a block? I'm not sure. Um, I end up blocking because uh, in the possibility that there's another torture mission on top of Leia, I think it makes sense to have Cassian there, you know, in case there's a, you know, I don't know, another, I can't imagine what it would be. It probably doesn't matter, but pulling a probe also doesn't matter too much. I just didn't have much else to do with Cassian. I wasn't planning on attacking out of Dathomir. Um, you know, if he ends up planetary assaulting, I could use the rerolls. So it seemed like I might as well try to get a block out of it, if nothing else. I'm not likely to move the base here anymore. Although I guess I could, maybe with a hidden fleet and a move to Yavin or something, if I got to the bottom. I don't know. And I use trade relations here to get a, um, to make my Guido neutral. I'm not really looking for the shield bunker, um, but I did want neutral loyalty there, um, just in case I end up giving control of it over later. And we got an overseas project now to put another Star Destroyer on queue. Okay, that's cool. And then he can move Alderan and Ord, oh, Alderan and Coruscant to Ord, and then he's got a nice, a nice combo there. Okay, so he's got two assault carriers and a star destroyer. Um, let's see what Ozzel's on here. Maybe had he not run gather intel and whatever, and maybe not run Vader's mission and instead ran um, ran an interdictor. Adding an interdictor to that mix would be nice. And here, this I think is is kind of sad for Grant too. Um, got to prepare for battle so I got my I got my Mon Cal cards and Nebulon cards all back so that's bad timing for him and I have Riken back and we have another overseas project okay two four four wow we got a big fleet there all of a sudden sort of wish I had sabotaged that shield bunker instead of uh yeah all right well so be it instead of hitting running I'm not sure so serendipitously, um, I have the ability to also, now that I played Prepare for Battle and it wasn't blocked, I have the ability to move my Starfighters to my Guido to help hedge against this oncoming Ozzel onslaught, most likely. Um, man, imagine if he had not played those Star Destroyers and then deployed them into Ilum as well here. That'd be crazy. All right. Um... So I moved some a speeder to my Guido to try to make this a more difficult decision for Veers. I wanted him to see a base that he could take over in Dantooine. You know, I have an X-Wing there, so it's okay. And I know he doesn't have Hunt Them Down anymore. So, you know, if he decides to blockade, you know, to take over the Rebel base and then blockade it so I don't get more troops, I, I would love that. I also wanted him to consider, you know, my Guido. Again, I wouldn't mind too much if he was sitting under my fleet there. So I, I tried to thin out my forces in Dantooine to bait him away from Rebel Cell, but he's going for Rebel Cell anyway, which makes a lot of sense, I think. So, all right. So Rebel Cell, I'm going to try to keep my guys alive here and pull out a Yahtzee. Uh, four damage that's not happening and everybody's dead okay that was a lot of work for rebel cell to have it all be done no problem drawing an objective and luckily i draw raid outposts apparently we're doing a lot of attacking here this uh this round i have a couple of hidden fleets i drew um strike team which is nice 
Also would have been nice if I had picked Han Solo or Chewbacca to lead that, but instead I have 1.2 Jin, um, and I have some stuff to deploy. And I can deploy it in Magito because he decided not to um, not to uh, planetary assault there. So I do get an extra Nebulon. Um, it only gives me one extra green dice, but a few more hit points. Um, okay. We'll see. I feel like I probably could have done this exchange maybe a little bit better. Um, but again... I'm I'm <laughs> I'm used to crushing rebels, not trying to crush Imperials as the rebels. Uh, we pulled a demolition. That's nice now that everything has been deployed into Ilum, so that's totally useless. Um, I'll take Strike Team and I'll put I assume Maydeen or maybe Jen on it. Um, yep, I'll put Maydeen on it with the idea that maybe I can score um, Crippling Blow. And I need to keep some leaders back, and I'm not ready to do a Hidden Fleet Rapid. So we'll see. I deployed everything there. I have Akbar back to, I guess, uh, I guess I am putting Cassian on Hidden Fleet in case I need to try to get creative here. That's just more of an emergency measure. Um, and then here we are with Ozil. Okay, so let's see what the Empire was able to pull together here. Luckily, I got my Starfighters and an extra Nebulon in, um, thanks to Regan's card and Veer's heading up to Mon Cal with that Rebel Cell. So it could have been could have been a useful thing. All right, three Mon Cal's, two Nebulon, four Starfighters. That's 4, 8, 12, 15, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 hit points for the Rebels against 4, 8, 16, 18, 20, 22, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, almost 30 hit points for the Empire. Now the, the heads up I have here is I have a huge advantage, which is Akbar 3 to 2, um, 3 dice, 3 rerolls to Ozil's 2, and Akbar has It's a Trap, which is just a monster card to be able to play, especially since I reloaded with Riken's card, right? I mean, just super critical there. So I play Fleet Logistics, which then gives me the option to play another card. Now, I could play the Nebulon card to remove damage, but I'm already going second here. So I wanna save the Nebulon card to flip the combat. So my options here really are to play the Y-Wing card and deal some damage and try to whittle down this fleet, or, I think the better move might have actually been to play the Corvette card to prevent them from playing a card next round, which ensures that next round I am also rolling second. I don't actually know what the best option there is, but we'll see. Okay, so Ozil heals one. First two red hits are blocked. Um, he's going to reroll two. He has a red, a critical, a couple of black hits. Um, I think I'd probably re-roll a black instead of a critical hit there, but I think he was going for for four damage maybe on a Mon Cal. Um, not entirely sure. So here, anyway, he's uh, doing damage to Starfighters, which I think is correct. Uh, maybe that means my Y-Wing card was right, since he only healed one of the two damage there. Um, not entirely sure. Um, so I'm going to get to fight back, and this is why going second in a combat is so powerful. I'm going to roll, you know, max dice pretty close, except one short on black. And I'm going to get three re-rolls, and I don't need to overkill anything, because um, I don't need to worry about him healing. So I can just lay on the damage. It's not a, not a great roll. Um, I can heal the Mon Cal, so that's okay. And did roll quite a few crits. Um, and again, since the Empire didn't have any card, he's not blocking any hits here or anything. So we'll just re-roll reds and blacks because I have a lot of hit points to get through. So one, two, three, four criticals, a red. I can heal a ship. And since I already have a Y-Wing and I'm already rolling max red and max green, it makes sense to heal the X-Wing. Um, so I do that. And then I can take out a assault carrier, and um, 
either a Star Destroyer or the remaining two Assault Carriers. I spend some time thinking about that, and I just want to get rid of, um, you know, potential dice. So he's already rolling max dice, so I'll just get rid of hit points here. So we'll get rid of the um, Assault Carriers. And then we have a land battle, and this battle doesn't go very well, as could be expected. Um, I don't play tow cables here because I still have some ground combat objectives I can score. So better to save that in place. And I also have one speeder left in the base as well. So I'm just throwing in the towel on this ground combat here. Again, I moved the um, speeder to Magito last round with the idea that I wanted to um, kind of bait veers into maybe... Maybe going for my Guido or maybe going for the base, but didn't end up working. All right, so the ground force has been wiped. There's a lot of uh, walkers down in place, so that's cool. Um, got three Moncals and only lost two fighters um, last round, whereas he lost three assault carriers and a striker. So, so far, battle's going pretty well. Uh, he's got 16, 18, 20, 22 hit points now to 12, 15, 18, 20. So we definitely leveled things out pretty good here. So here, you probably play the Nebulon card. I mean, most likely Ozil flips the combat, and if he does, you can flip the combat back. If he does something different and does damage, well, then you can remove damage from Moncal's with the Nebulon card. So basically, I think the Nebulon, I, I'm debating here whether or not I want to play no card next round, but I think the, I think the Neb, I think you have to hedge against the, the flip the combat. Um, so let's see what happens here. I play Nebulon, Ozil plays, oh, the TIE Fighter card. Yeah, that makes sense, do a couple of damage. So if I had not played the Nebulon card, I think you do the damage against the Moncals, but because the Nebulon was played, it basically negates that damage. So Ozil's deciding to just go for the Nebulon kills here. Um, again, he rolled lots of uh, red hits. So in theory, maybe you over damage a Moncal. You know, he's got two, four, six, five red hits. Um, plus two from the TIE Fighter, so he could have put all seven on a Moncal, or maybe four on one and three on the other, and then two of them get removed, and then next round maybe you play No Heal or flip the combat, although I think the No Heal card's already been played for him. But anyway, he's just going for damage here, so i um, going to try to take out the Nebulons and whittle the fleet down. Now, this is a pretty critical role for me here. I need um, I need some damage. So I'd rather have three Moncals in a fight than four Star Destroyers if I'm rolling second. Um, if I whiff here, this will be bad news because um, I'm starting to run out of my good combat cards now. And let's see. Okay, Akbar does pretty good. Got six red damage here. Can heal one of the Nebulons. Um, six is enough for a Star Destroyer and a half. Then I have three re-rolls. Um, and I go for a red, and I think the right move is two blacks here. I have a lot of TIE Fighters to try to get through, too. Um, so, yeah, I think I, I pass on the extra reds and just go for black hits here. Okay, one more critical. Okay, so that's one Star Destroyer, uh, one TIE Fighter and three more flexible damage, which I think is probably best to put on the Star Destroyer here. The reason is, is because I could play, um, so if he flips the combat next round, I can play no heal, um, which it doesn't help my healing, but it does, you know, so, so playing a no heal card is similar to flipping the combat back, except for existing damage cannot be removed by the person who's rolling first. So in some instances, you know, it's okay to let them flip the combat, which is what he's doing here. And I'm rolling first with no heal. So if I roll one red hit, that first Star Destroyer is down. And if I roll five red hits, which wouldn't be ridiculous, then two Star Destroyers will go down and heals won't help him there. 
So I think this is, it's really important to think about this exchange of combat cards and use this as, you know, to really think about what you care about. In this instance, I'm not so worried about healing because I have enough Moncals and enough hit points left. You know, 4, 8, 12, 15, 16 hit points left for me. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 hit points left for the Empire. Um, and this is going to be a big swing here. So he could roll, you know, mostly crits here and probably take out a Mon Cal and a, um, and a Nebulon and maybe some Starfighters too. But I'd still have two Mon Cals left, even with a great roll by Ozel here. Um, the key being that he can't simply roll two red heals and then heal those Star Destroyers. All right, so he's left with a single Star Destroyer and a TIE Fighter now, um, and, and a pretty mediocre roll for Ozzel. Um, Reroll is okay. Again, that heal could have helped him. Um, three, four, he's got five damage he can do for reds. Um, I guess that's enough to kill the Nebulon too. Okay, five damage. So he kills a Mon Cal, kills a Nebulon, kills a Starfighter. And then I am left with, yeah, I'll probably kill the Y-Wing instead. Maybe. I don't know. So I'm left with um, two Mon Cal's and a Y-Wing, and I still have Ion Cannons in my hand. And he's kind of out of gimmicks here, um, outside of rolling second. So Ozzel's making the decision to retreat. Um, you know, it's probably okay. Um, if you look at the objectives, I need to score... At the end of this round, if I score one, he'll still have another another round to try to finish me off. Maybe two if he can pull off. You now there's no carbon freeze in the rote deck. All right, this infiltrates real nice. Um, obviously, I'm not going for the Death Star, so we'll get major victory back on top here. Uh, I'll now be able to score major victory and potentially... Um, Raid, Raid Imperial Factory, right? Those are two late game stage three objectives that are pretty easy to score. Um, I can score major victory with my two Mon Cals and I can score, um, and I can score, uh, lead the strike team another one. Now, <laughs> Grant plays exploit weakness. So we're gonna shuffle and succeeds because I have a captured leader there. And he pulls out crippling blow and put it's crippling blow back on top. So that means I will not be able to score a crippling blow this round, which is okay because I have Raid Imperial Factory. And then it also means I won't get major victory next round. Um, and I also can't score with Rebel Cell. So I'm going to use Strike Team to try to win a combat in uh, Seleucami. Had he got um, Raid Imperial Factory with exploit, I think I would be in a little bit of trouble here. I would I would have to have gone for, you know, maybe raiding Ilum and taking out that speeder or taking out the ATST and the shield bunker there. I don't know, that'd be that would have been an interesting exploit if that had gotten a different objective here. But instead I go for Salukmai, he doesn't block. I bring both of my ground units and win the combat there for Raid Factory. Um, he did have Tag there that might have been able to block, but I don't know, maybe maybe it's worth it. I had Jin there. And so now that I have Crippling Blow on top of this objective deck, I actually use Jin's card to put an objective back on top of level one. And I could have gone with Support of the Huts. I think about maybe being tricky and putting uh, Rebel Cell back on top, but I just end up going with um, Liberation. I don't know about that decision, but I know Liberation's easier to score than Crippling Blow. So, you know, maybe I draw Public Uprising and then win with Liberation. I'm not too sure. We'll see how this plays out here. All right, he's got um, Veers left. Oh, I guess he could have blocked with veers maybe i maybe i try that block with veers i'm not sure 
All right, Emperor does a deployment. Now, this is a kind of a cool move here. Um, you know, he can't deploy on Dantooine, obviously, but by deploying in Dathomir, he has the ability to uh, build there next round, um, build a shield bunker there, because um, we are entering a build round, and um, Empire is going to have, um, I believe, a shield bunker they can put into play here through um, Bothawi. Um, he could also subjugate Bespin with the Death Star and then go that route as well. So, okay. Um, interesting. I still have a hidden fleet. I have a shield bunker or a sabotage I could play over where the, you know, I don't know where I'd play a sabotage. Maybe over my Guido. I'm not sure. Um, I don't have an easy way to score another objective here. So... All right, sabotage with Riken. Riken, Riken, Riken. Not sure. I think I decide to sabotage my Guido here. Yep. Um, I don't know if that's the right place or not, but the, that rebel fleet is getting kind of thin. Um, there's no more Imperials on the queue, and there's no interdictor that's scheduled to come out on turn one. So Tag is going to move troops around here. And... I'm assuming Grant is thinking about where I might try to rapid to, but I mean, I'm not going anywhere. I'm just sitting behind those Mon Cals. So he moves the assault carrier to Alderaan. That's the nearest capital ship next to the Star Destroyer, so that probably makes sense. Um, but again, maybe maybe instead, you know, block with block with Strike Team. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, Veers is now going to move from, from where to where. Moves back to Toydaria with the Nalhada fleet. Okay. Uh, centralizes the fleet a little bit. Again, maybe, I mean, maybe Veers doesn't block successfully, right? Maybe Veers blocks with two and Maydeen and Jin have three point three point three and two greens to roll so I guess unlikely that Veers would have blocked that but I'm not sure how important it was to to move to Toydaria in that instance you know in the best of circumstances you have three rounds left to get to the base so one two three the Toydaria fleet's not going to make it anywhere super useful and then Tarkin removes loyalty from Nalhada which I think makes sense you want to make sure I don't score uprising because uh, he knows I have it Okay, uh, contingency plan, that plus Wookiee Uprising, I guess, in theory, maybe could have gotten me close to um, to Uprising. I'm not sure. Probably still wouldn't have made it. Um, yeah, I guess we'll see. Um, also drew support of the Mon Cal, which would have been nice, except that's already loyal too. So I guess with Uprising, just... Think about keeping planets clear that you can gain loyalty on with things other than build alliance, maybe. Um, I don't know. Uprising's a lot easier to score with the rote deck because of regional aid, but it gets scored sometimes uh, just with base deck as well. Okay, so what do I need to do here? Um, obviously, I would have loved to have had major victory. I just need to score one objective point, and if I do that, then the game's over. So you'll notice I deployed a U-Wing and a Trooper in Felucia, and we have a sabotaged Seleucami with a single Stormtrooper on there. So potentially I can move from Felucia to Seleucami. Um, I would have to defeat that Stormtrooper and then um, survive. And then I could score Liberation, which I just got with Jin's card. So see if something to fight for pays off here. And Tag comes to the rescue, grabs three cards, of which one of those cards is the 501st, which will automatically defeat my unit. Um, so I cannot score Liberation here. So that's too bad. Um, not a lot I can do here, so I'll just waste a card. Uh, my trooper dies, and Dodonna is going to retreat to, uh, to Mandalore. Now, this 
take a look, go ahead and pause if you need to here and see what the move is if you're Imperials. Um, so he's gonna hire a mercenary, okay. There are, there, there's a pretty slick combination here that the Empire could pull off. And if they manage to prevent me from scoring an objective, they could put them they could at least give themselves a reasonable chance in Dantooine here. So, all right, job is there. Um, I don't have any super cool missions here and I'm a little bit nervous to attack anything. Um, I could sabotage the shield bunker would probably be an okay move, although he's got blockers back for that. Um, I end up wanting to sh sabotage the shield bunker in Ilum, which I think is a mistake. I think I should have done that in... Uh, Dathomir, but oh, maybe I did. Maybe there's no shield bunker in Dathomir. Okay. Anyway, here's still the uh, the the move he's got. So attacking with the Emperor into the U wing. Okay. Um, I can try to kill the U wing with the ion cannon plus a hit. Um, I have Dodana there, so that would give me two rerolls to roll a critical. Um, ground combat is three on three. Um, he's got all his ground combat cards back, so I end up not. Um, I end up trying to survive a turn, and I think that's probably a mistake. I think I need to ion cannon there, but I was a little worried about that one single star destroyer for some reason. Um, so the U wing is dead. I roll a hit, but I can't take out the assault carrier, and then the ground combat. I think I'll go ahead and play, I don't know, I guess I could play Toe Gables here too. I just waste a card, one unit's down. Um, he takes out a couple more. And he is opting to leave a unit alive. Okay, so he opts to leave a unit alive, which means he's planning on retreating. And I see it now, but it's too late. So he's play, he retreats to Dathomir um, with the assault carrier. Okay, pretty cool. Now, he probably could have done that with Tag as well. And then the other move he has is he can attack with the Star Destroyer into my Guido. Maybe play Imposing Presence, or if he doesn't have it, try to have a different combat first and try to cycle to Imposing Presence, but he could attack with the... Oh, Rule by Fear in my Guido. Um, he could attack with that Star Destroyer and also try to consolidate that into Dathomir. So by playing Darth Vader there, um, now if Veers attacks my Guido, he's got two rerolls, so he has a chance to keep that Star Destroyer healthy. right? So it would be an ideal scenario would be to attack out of Ilum, uh, you know, bring bring everything or leave something if you're worried about a rapid. Um, so attack out of Ilum, play, uh, try to get your Star Destroyer to survive, and then kill the Y-Wing, because you're not going to kill the two Mon Cals, and then retreat to Dathomir and also replenish all of your space cards. Um, then next round, I have to attack um, Dathomir, and it's possible that, you know, you won't be able to send a leader, but it's possible I don't win that. I mean, it's unlikely, but it's possible I don't win that because I don't have my Mon Cal card. And then you can attack out of Dathomir into the rebel base and win. So pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff. I think Grant definitely had the right idea here. Um, he's left with the Interdictor card, it looks like. So no card next round. I play the same thing, no card next round. Um, not a particularly useful play with that card, um, since he's not going to be around for long. And like I said, I see this here, but there's not a lot I can do about it. Um, luckily, I roll three hits, and then Akbar just needs one more here. One more. Okay, so I got the Star Destroyer, got the TIE Fighter. He almost took out a... Um, he almost took out a Mon Cal there, too. So imagine had that roll been worse. Um, yeah, 
definitely could have ruined my day a little bit. Um, okay, so then we're down to contingency plan. There's a capture that happens here. You know, wrap up Akbar. I suppose that makes sense. Um, contingency plan to get another build alliance done. And Leia goes back to the base and Akbar is captured. Um, again, had there been a Star Destroyer in um, Dantooine, that might have made sense. The other thing I could have considered would have been retreating back to the base and then forcing him to choose deploying on Megiddo. Um, I'm not sure, not sure about that. Um, I think I probably would have stayed put. I do draw a major victory, so I can potentially score that this turn, uh, but most importantly, I drew a hit and run. Um, and because there's no Star Destroyer on Dathomir, the hit and run cannot be blocked. And if it's not blocked, then the Assault Carrier is toast. Um, he can't deploy on Ilum. Everything's a little bit too far away, and we're just one from victory now. So even if I don't do any like even if I didn't draw hit and run I could attack the assault carrier defeat the assault carrier and then he wouldn't have a way of getting into the base because there's no um, no planetary and no hunt them down anymore so in a way that initial deployment into blocking or into attacking the Death Star may have ended up paying out you know in some aspects pretty well due to the um, you know due to the um, you, uh, them using up, hunt them down early. So anyway, uh, fun game with Grant. I hope you guys liked watching me play Rebels. I have another couple Rebel recordings where I'm playing those to go through too. Uh, let me know in the comments if you like the Rebel play or if you'd rather me just go back to Imperials. Um, thanks again for watching. This was a fun one. Ran a little bit over because, uh, again, just getting used to editing down those Rebels. So lots to think about and, uh, talk to you guys soon. All right, take care. Bye.